Huge thanks to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Hello furniture friends, Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott. I have this entire camera roll filled with different furniture flipping inspiration and ideas that I have found online and I think would be really fun ways to try and upcycle worn out and outdated furniture. And I think that this 90s console that I thrifted for $17 is going to be the perfect fit to try and recreate this stunner from Anthropology. Before I head into this flip, I want to take a few seconds to tell you about a fantastic fragrance subscription service called Scentbird. I don't spend a ton of time on hair and makeup just to get all messy out in the garage, but fun fact, I do love to dress myself up with a spritz of nice perfume, and Scentbird allows me to choose a new designer fragrance to try out each month for just $16 US. Scentbird's vials are way bigger than a regular size sample, which means you can get a nice 30 day supply without committing to an expensive full size bottle. Last month I got Dolce Peony by Dolce & Gabbana, which is gorgeously floral. And this month I chose a rain day by Derek Lom, which has this great dewy freshness to it. I'm also excited to try Pure Sugar by Eau de Juice, which just like it sounds is sweet and springy with top notes of a wild strawberry and pink grapefruit. They work with a ton of top designer brands and great indie labels so you can always find a fun new scent. Check out Scentbird by clicking the link below and use my code KDS55 for 55% off your first fragrance, which is less than $8 US. So this is what I'm working with. Like I said, it was $17 from one of my local Habitat for Humanity restores. It's already painted in some funky metallic brown latex that is peeling right off of the original orange 90s oak laminate. This thing was made in Canada circa 1991, is 100% particle board, and might be the heaviest piece of furniture that I have ever come across. I'm not even sure what to call it. It could be a dresser or a buffet or a media console. It gives me office furniture vibes, but I think I'm just gonna call it a buffet. It's a buffet. I removed all of the original hardware, which has also been painted, but I'm planning on replacing that anyways. And then once I had everything disassembled, I decided to break out my random orbital sander and some 80 grit sandpaper to get rid of this paint. Sometimes I do go the route of a chemical paint stripper, but in this case, the paint is barely holding on, so the sander is going to get things done just fine. To fill in the old hardware holes, I used some of this quick wood, which is a two-part epoxy putty, it comes in a tube, so you just cut off the amount that you need, and then you mix the two products together until it's an even color. I filled in the holes in the drawers and then made sure to fill in the front and the back of the holes on the doors, since you'll see those when they're open. I let the filler dry for about an hour while I worked on some other stuff, and then I sanded that flush. This laminate is obviously not too slick or slippery after all of that sanding, but I do want to seal it with some heavy duty primer to make sure that the particle board doesn't have a chance to soak up any moisture and swell. And it's also gonna give me a really nice, consistent, smooth surface over the whole piece. I also know that someone will have something to say about me not removing these hinges before painting. I don't like to unscrew hinges from particle board structures because the particle board just crumbles and those holes will never hold a screw properly again. It's kind of a one-time deal with this stuff. So to make sure that I can rehang the doors in the right spot without having to drill new holes and do all of the fussing and fiddling around with readjusting everything, I'm just gonna paint around these. 
I let my primer dry and then sanded it smooth with some 400 grit sandpaper to knock down the roller texture. I just used my little three by four detail sander for this for no other reason than that's the size of 400 grit sandpaper that I've got in stock at the moment. Now I'm ready to start painting this thing. My inspiration piece is bone or shell inlay. So I wanted a neutral off-white backdrop. This can has a bunch of leftover house and canvas paint colors in it and is obviously pretty crusty. So I just wanted to use this. Up. And for the sake of time, I decided to spray the base coat. So I strained this chunky mess and added water until it was the consistency of about heavy cream. Then I loaded it into my Wagner Flexio 590 and applied two coats. To mimic the natural color variation in the bone on my inspo piece, I grabbed some pure sandstone and pure linen and a foam roller. I rolled on a little bit of the lighter beige and then the darker beige, trying to be as random as I could and just sort of blending the colors together with the roller a bit. Once that was dry, I broke out my three quarter inch painter's tape and started on those stripes. I used a few smaller pieces of tape as spacers and laid out my tape stripes as straight as I could. And I'm not gonna lie, this took a long time and it was so frustrating for me. I had to start over a few times to get the spacing right and line up the pattern with the natural gaps around the doors. But after about two hours of fiddling with this, I gave up and decided to just let it be what it was going to be. To seal the tape lines in, I rolled over a little bit more of my sandstone paint so that the darker shade that I was going to use on top of the stripes didn't bleed under that tape and make a mess. Then I poured some of this river rock gray into my tray and rolled that over everything. Again, I didn't want this to have perfect full coverage. I wanted a whole bunch of color variation so that it didn't look too stark. Once that layer was dry, I peeled off my tape lines and gave the whole buffet a light sand with some more 400 grit sandpaper. up and protect this paint I decided to spray my favorite water-based poly which is a Verithane's diamond wood finish it's called ultimate water-based polyurethane if you're in the states I poured some of this into my sprayer again and adjusted down all of the dials to their minimum flow because this is really thin stuff and I don't want it to drip by applying too much
I sprayed on two coats of poly and then brought the buffet inside the house. I bought these beautiful gold handles from Etsy. I'll leave a link to these down in the description box, but I think they play into the late 80s, early 90s vibe while still being more modern than the originals were. I drilled myself some new holes and screwed these on and here is the finished product. I'm not quite sure how in love with this piece I am. The colors turned out a little more dark and muddy than I really wanted them to. And I think it definitely needs to be elevated up off the floor on some new metallic legs. So to me, it's not quite finished yet. I may actually just tuck it away and start a little repaint pile. Make sure you leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of this piece. Also, make sure that you are subscribed before you go so that you don't miss out if I do change my mind and decide to change this one up again. Thank you for hanging out with me and coming along on this journey of exploring. Stencils and stripes are definitely not my forte, but the best way to learn is to try. So I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will catch you all next time.